I work late shifts at a hospital about 30 miles from where I live, mostly rural roads all the way back to my house. This particular night was foggy, like horror movie foggy, where you can barely see a few feet in front of you. I was driving my usual route home, the only light coming from my headlights, which just made the fog look even thicker. As I'm driving, I notice something odd about the road. There seems to be something reflective on the road ahead. Not moving, just kind of there. As I get closer, I realize it's a bicycle lying on its side. Its rear light was still blinking. My first thought is crap. There might be someone hurt, so I pull over, hazard lights on, and get out to check. There's nobody around. Just this bike, with one of its wheels still slowly spinning. I call out, asking if anyone's there, if anyone needs help. Nothing, just silence and fog. I feel this chill go down my spine, but I brush it off as the foggy cold. I decide to move the bike off the road, figuring whoever it belongs to might come back for it. Just as I'm lifting the bike, I hear it, a whisper, but so clear, don't. I spin around fast, thinking, okay, someone's here, maybe injured in hiding because they're scared or whatever, but there's literally no one. I'm like, okay, I'm just tired hearing things. So I move the bike to the side of the road and head back to my car. As I'm about to get back into my car, I hear it again. Leave it. It's louder this time, more urgent. I look around squinting through the fog, but again, there's nobody. Now I'm really freaked out, but part of me is also worried about leaving someone out there who might need help. So, I call out again, announcing I'm going to call the police so they can come help. I get in my car, lock the doors, and just as I'm pulling out my phone, I see in my rearview mirror a figure standing right behind my car. I couldn't make out much, just an outline of a person, kind of wavering in the fog. I'm not gonna lie, I freaked out, I didn't even think. Just put the car in gear and drove off as fast as I could. I kept checking the mirror until the figure was out of sight. When I finally looked ahead again, my heart nearly stopped. I was heading straight for a tree that seemed to have appeared out of nowhere. I managed to swerve and avoid it but I ended up skidding off the road and into a ditch. It took me a good few minutes to catch my breath and not die of a heart attack. I called the cops, told them about the bike and the figure, and waited for them to arrive. They found the bike, but no sign of anyone around. They towed my car, and one of the officers gave me a lift home. I haven't driven that road since then, and I'm not sure I ever will at night again. It was late November, and I was driving back home from a business trip. I had about a six-hour drive ahead of me, and I started late afternoon, figuring I'd get home late at night. I was driving on this two-lane highway through pretty rural areas. You know, the kind where there's not much around but fields, forests, and the occasional gas station every few dozen miles. As I'm about three hours into my drive, the sun has set and it's pitch black outside, aside from my headlights and the rare passing car. I'm listening to a podcast to keep myself alert, but the road is so monotonous it's tough to stay focused. About this time, I notice a car behind me. It's nothing unusual at first, but then I start to realize this car is sticking really close to me, like uncomfortably close. Whenever I speed up, they speed up. When I slow down, they do the same. I thought maybe they wanted to pass me, so I slowed right down and nudged towards the shoulder, but no, they just stayed right behind me. I'm starting to get nervous now, thinking maybe I've got a flat tire or something's wrong with the back of my car. And this person is trying to let me know. So I decide to stop at the next gas station I see, hoping that maybe they'll pull in and tell me what's up. Finally, after what felt like the longest 20 minutes, I see the lights of a gas station and pull off the highway. The car follows me. At this point, my heart is pounding. 
I park under a street light and watch as this other car parks directly behind me, blocking me in. A guy gets out of the car and starts walking towards me. Now I'm a pretty big guy, but something about this situation felt so off. I lock my doors and crack my window just a bit, ready to peel out at any moment. He comes up to the window and leans down. He looks normal enough, but there's this intensity in his eyes that puts me on edge. He asks if I can give him a ride since his car is acting up, and he's not sure it'll make it where he needs to go. His car, from what I can see, looks perfectly fine. Alarm bells are ringing in my head. Something about his story doesn't add up. Why follow me for miles before asking for help? I politely decline, saying I'm not headed that way and suggest he calls a tow truck or roadside assistance. He stares at me for a moment that feels way too long, then smiles and says, no problem, before walking back to his car. I wait, watching him get in his car, half expecting him to start yelling or something, but nothing. He just sits there in his car. I wait a few more minutes, then decide it's safe to leave. I start driving out of the gas station, constantly checking my mirrors to make sure he isn't following me again. I get back on the highway, and for the next hour I'm jumping at every single headlight I see in my mirrors. Eventually, I don't see the car anymore and start to relax. But I can't stop thinking about what might have happened if I had opened my doors or even got out of the car. When I finally got home, I was so shaken up I just sat in my driveway for a while, trying to calm down. The next day I reported the incident to the local police near that gas station, just in case it was something serious. They took down my information but said there wasn't much they could do since nothing actually happened. I'm a night shift nurse, so I'm used to driving home when most of the world is asleep. My route cuts through some rural areas before hitting the interstate. It's usually quiet, a time for me to decompress after a 12-hour shift. Last night, however, was different. About halfway through my drive on a particularly secluded stretch of road, my car started making a strange noise. It was a sudden loud clanking that got worse quickly. I know nothing about cars, but I knew I couldn't keep driving like that. I pulled over, heart sinking because there's barely any cell service in that area. And of course, it was the middle of the night. I popped the hood, not that I expected to magically fix anything, but I felt like I should at least look. That's when I noticed the smoke starting to seep out. Great, a breakdown, just what I needed. I was standing there trying to decide whether to walk to a spot with better cell service or just wait for a passing car when I heard it. A scream. It was distant but clear enough in the quiet night to make the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Panic stricken, I slammed the hood shut and listened. Another scream. This time it sounded closer. My first thought was to get back in my car and lock the doors. I peered out into the darkness, trying to see where the sound was coming from. That's when I saw movement. Shadows shifting between the trees across the road. Someone was out there. I'm a nurse. I couldn't just drive away if someone was hurt. I called out, asking if anyone needed help, my voice shaking. There was a brief silence, then a rustling, and two people emerged from the woods. They looked rough, clothes torn and dirty. At first glance, one might mistake them for zombies. Something about them set off alarm bells in my mind. Not the people who had been screaming for help, but perhaps the reason for the screams. They approached, and I asked if they were okay if they needed me to call someone. They exchanged a look, and one of them, a large, burly man, asked if they could use my phone. His voice was calm, but his eyes were darting around, nervous, or maybe looking for something. Or someone. I hesitated, and it must have shown. Seeing my hesitation, he took a step closer and insisted more forcefully this time. That's when the other, a smaller, wiry individual, suddenly lunged towards the car. 
trying to open the passenger door. It was locked, thankfully. I realized then that this wasn't about needing help. It was something much more dangerous. Adrenaline kicked in. I jumped into the driver's seat, slammed the door, and without thinking, started the car. It protested, that horrible clanking noise filling the air. But it moved. I floored it, the car limping along just fast enough to get away from them as they shouted and chased after me for a few terrifying moments. I didn't stop driving until I reached the interstate where I pulled into a well-lit gas station and finally allowed myself to breathe. I called the police and reported everything. They told me they'd send someone to check the area. I don't know if they found anyone, but I know I got lucky. I got away. I was driving back home from my friend's place. A good two-hour drive on mostly back roads since we live in a pretty rural area of Pennsylvania. It was around 1 a.m., so as usual the roads were almost deserted. Which I normally find pretty peaceful, you know. Just me, my music, and the night. About an hour into the drive, right when I'm passing through this heavily wooded area, my headlights caught something up ahead on the shoulder. As I got closer, I could see it was a car, looked like an old 90s sedan, all banged up and just sitting there, hazard lights dead and no street lights around. It gave off a creepy vibe, but it's not unusual to see a broken down car out here. But then, as I slowed down a bit, just out of curiosity and caution, I saw someone sitting on the hood. It was a woman wearing a white dress that looked almost glowing in my headlights, which was weird but freaky too. Her head was in her hands like she was crying or something. Now I'm not someone who believes in ghosts or anything, but every story about a ghostly woman on a deserted road flashed through my mind right then. Despite feeling every part of me screaming to just drive on, I thought, what if she needs help? What if she's in trouble? So I pulled over, keeping a good distance. I lowered my window a bit and called out, Hey, do you need help? She didn't respond at first, just kept sitting there. I was about to call out again when she suddenly looked up, her face. It was unsettling. She was pale, too pale, with dark circles under her eyes like she hadn't slept in days. But it was her expression that froze me. It was a mix of desperation and something else, something darker. I need a ride, she said. Her voice was hoarse, barely above a whisper, but clear in the dead silence of the night. Against my better judgment, I told her I could call her a tow or the police, but she cut me off. No, please just let me in. I need to get away from here. Something about the urgency in her voice made me override all the alarm bells in my head. I unlocked the passenger door, and she got in. She smelled faintly of damp earth. I tried to make conversation, asking where she needed to go, but she just pointed forward, saying, Just drive. We rode in silence for a few miles, the only sound my heart pounding. I kept glancing at her, trying to figure out if I should be worried. She just stared straight ahead, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. Then out of nowhere she turned to me, her face inches from mine, and said, Faster, please. Her voice was urgent, scared. I pressed a bit more on the gas, confused, but now starting to really feel the fear creeping up my spine. I didn't know what she was running from, but part of me didn't want to find out. We were coming up on a sharp bend, one I knew well and always took carefully. But she suddenly screamed, don't slow down. I hesitated for a split second, but ended up barreling around the bend much faster than I should have. My heart was racing, my hands gripping the wheel so hard they hurt. As we straightened out, she relaxed and whispered, Thank you. I was about to ask what the hell was going on when she suddenly said, Stop the car. I need to get out here. We were in the middle of nowhere, 
just fields and woods under a moonless sky. But I stopped the car, not wanting to question anything anymore. She got out and without another word, walked into the trees and disappeared. Just like that. I waited a minute, half expecting her to come running back, but she didn't. My whole body was shaking as I pulled back onto the road and drove home faster than I ever have. I kept looking in my rearview mirror, half expecting to see her sitting in the back seat, but there was nothing. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since. Who was she? What was she running from? Or was I just part of some ghost story now? The rational part of me thinks there might be an explanation, but honestly, I'm just glad I made it home and am here to tell the tale. Thank you for watching. If you found these stories gripping, don't forget to subscribe for more spine-tingling content. For another hair-raising tale, check out our suggested video. And if you're hungry for more eerie encounters, dive into our playlist featuring similar chilling narratives.